Well, hello everyone and welcome to a brand new video and it's gonna be my review of The Flash, directed by Andy Muschietti, who you might know as the director of some horror films like Mama and the It movies. And in this movie, Barry Allen goes back in time to save his parents, but in doing so, it comes at a great cost for the universe. Ever since the DCEU started with Man of Steel, it hasn't been really consistent. A lot of it has been a hit and a miss. It hasn't been really consistent with the tones either. Like it goes from dark, gritty to fun and comedic. Personally, I love Zack Snyder's vision. Uh, Man of Steel is good. BVS is okay, I guess. It has a lot of problems, but it's kind of watchable. Zack Snyder Justice League is the best movie of the DCU, definitely. And I also love the first Wonder Woman, Shazam, and maybe even Aquaman. So in this movie, this is clearly a continuation of the Justice League movie. And there are times where they make references to Zack Snyder's Justice League, but also a lot of the times it feels like they're referencing the Justice League, you know, the one, the, the shitty version of Justice League. Like for example, I was really excited to see Ben Affleck back as Batman for one last time. Like he's such a great Batman, I love him. And during that scene, when he comes out of the plane with the motorcycle, you've seen it in the trailers. I just had a genuine smile on my face. It was, it was like, like it just made me smile. Like I love that. And I also really love his one scene as Bruce Wayne talking to Barry. That scene was very emotional as well. Although I will say that at the end of his Batman action sequence, you could tell that he was pulled straight out of the Justice League. Like he was being more fun and comedic and I'm not used to, I, I just don't, I'm not a fan of that interpretation of Batman. I just love the dark and grittiness of Batman, but I wasn't a big fan of him being fun and comedic, even if it's just this little scene. So it's not, it's not a big complaint, but I'm just, it's what I noticed. In this movie, we also get Michael Keaton back as Batman, the OG, the one that I grew up with, the first Batman that I ever saw as a kid. And when he first appears in this movie, it's like he never left the role. Like he just slips back into the role like nothing ever happened. Like he is such a natural at, do, at playing this character. It's like time hasn't gone by since his last movie in Batman Returns to now, you know? And during his first appearance, as Batman in the suit, flying in the air, and the Danny Elfman music came on. I was like, <laughs> another smile on my face, another genuine smile. Like, I'm just smiling so much during this movie. I also think it's really cool to see Michael Keaton do like these way more crazy stunts than what he did back in Batman and Batman Returns. Like, I get that over time stunts have improved and we've gotten better, but yeah, it's really cool to see this 80s, 90s action hero like be more. Uh, move like a more like modern stuntman, if you get what I mean. In this movie, we also get introduced to Sasha Cal as Kara Zor-El, also known as Supergirl, and she was absolutely fantastic. I love the new suit, I love the new look, and I love the fact that she looks different than the previous incarnations of Supergirl. She was freaking badass, but I'm kind of sad that we probably won't be getting any more of her in the future, so... But I mean, I hope they can include her in the future, but I, I don't I don't think so. Now, say what you will about what Ezra Miller did in real life, but uh, I believe that in this movie, he really gives a magnificent performance as Barry Allen. And just like the Flashpoint Paradox movie, this is a great coming of age story full of heart and emotion. And Ezra pulled all the emotional parts, but also the comedic parts. This is a pretty funny movie as well. He also has to play uh, two versions of himself, the present and his past self. And I like the idea that in this story, he gets to kind of develop as a character and grow based on how he sees his younger self, on how his his younger self is so obnoxious and annoying. There is also a really emotional scene between Barry and his mother that we haven't really gotten in any of the recent MCU movies. MCU, I mean, DCEU. But yeah, most DC movies, um, I mean, since The Dark Knight, I guess, haven't really hit that emotional punch, but I think this one really nailed it. One thing I will say about this film is that despite this film being a fun comic book movie, full of comedy as well, and all this CGI spectacle, but it actually does have some heart and emotion. And not only just for Barry's mother and father, but also even some of Michael Keaton's scenes as Bruce Wayne and also even Ben Affleck's scene as Bruce Wayne, even though it was really short. Now, my only flaw with this movie is probably that there's a lot of CGI. And yeah, it's 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 something. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with having CGI in movies, but it can be a problem if it's very distracting during the entire movie. There are many scenes where it kind of takes me out of the movie a bit, but then also I, I try to think to myself, and I just have fun with this movie. <laughs> like the characters are fun to watch. There's heart and emotion, so... Yeah, I'm, I'm okay with that. Like there are sequences in this film where Barry has to travel back in time to the events of Man of Steel. And you can tell that in these Man of Steel scenes, locations, they are standing in front of a green screen. I just kind of wish they would have the opportunity to actually go back to these actual locations in Man of Steel to make it a bit more natural, but 
I don't know, maybe it was just for budget reasons or something. And take a movie like Zack Snyder's Justice League, for example, that movie has a lot of green screen and you can tell, but it kind of makes it seamless or it blends in well with the color grading and the style but there is definitely something that doesn't work quite well here, the CGI and the flash. And like I said earlier, Ezra Miller is playing two versions of himself and you could tell that one of the berries, you know, sometimes it's deep faked or it's CGI and it's very distracting. Overall, the flash is a wonderful tribute to DC because of all the cameos, but it's also a wonderful coming of age story with incredible performances. Sasha Kala as Supergirl, Michael Keaton is the shit. And once again, say what you will about Ezra Miller, but he gave a really great performance as Barry Allen, the flash. And with that, I'm going to give the flash an eight out of 10. So what did you think of the flash? Let me know in the comments, like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one.